happy to see so many are here. Uh, welcome to this presentation on uh, a beginner's course on uh, catalog-driven development. My name is Johan Sederbrink and I've been working with Configura for just shy of two years now. Uh, a lot with, with catalog-driven extensions and, and, uh, and uh, hybrid, hy the hybrid concept. Uh, I'll be talking about how to augment uh, a strict catalog <coughs> extension with code from uh, uh, with code, and, uh, and if you want to uh, take a look at the material that I'll be working on here, we're going to see a few demos in Emacs. Uh, that's available on uh, customer custom developer conferences Vegas, November two thousand seventeen, on my catalog driven extension basic. So, let's get started. <clears throat> I'm not going to be talking about how to set up a catalog. Uh, I, uh, I see that as a separate topic and we've had a few, few sessions on that earlier today. Um, so, in this presentation we, we assert that we already have a catalog. It has products and we want to modify the behavior to suit uh, the, the um, the extension we want to create. Um, catalogs are great for starting up uh, an extension. You quickly get a, uh, a viable product. Uh, you can keep all your stuff in one place. You, it handles 3D, it handles 2D, uh, you got your domains, you got your features. So, so it's a good start, but eventually in an extension you're gonna feel like, okay, so since this is a specialized product catalog, uh, you're gonna run into limitations. You can't do everything in catalogs, and that's what we're here to, to talk about. Catalogs come with a few, uh, as of right now, I'm always speaking about the current state of the catalogs, not necessarily what it's gonna be in a year or half a year. Uh, catalogs is constantly in the development, of course. Uh, one of the things that we right now have something of a, a of uh, a, a caveat with is is feature to feature dependencies. If you uh, if you set up, for instance, you have three different products with different models, <coughs> and you want to say, and, and all of them can have uh, colors from the domain, say red, green, and blue to make it easy. Uh, the triangle shape though should only allow uh, blue color, for instance, then you have to set up different feature domains and especially if you then uh, have something that's dependent on that, you're going to be spending a lot of time creating a lot of features. Uh, it's all described as a tree in Catalog Creator and, and I'm sure many of you know that those trees can become very big. Uh, we can uh, uh, we can easily disable some of these uh, behaviors for CET through proxy, you know, don't display everything. We can append the validations uh, if you select the, the faulty options. And we're going to see uh, some, uh, uh, some examples on, on how to do this during this presentation. Another thing that's uh, currently not uh, available, uh, very much supported in, in catalogs is the snapping behavior. You have like uh, male-female connectors, it's a bit like puzzle pieces, but you cannot check whether or not another connector on, on the same snapper has snapped something straight out of the box of the catalog, uh, catalog creator. So if you have a strictly catalog, uh, catalog extension right now, you, you're going to need to do some programming to set up that logic for connections. Calculation view is another thing. If you, for some reason, might not like the default settings, uh, you're going to have to do some programming to sort that out. But it's pretty easy to, to, to do pretty major changes, and, and we're going to go through them. So, what I've done is I've set up an extension. Um, that I'd like to show you guys. Let's see here, it's a little bit difficult to see the screen here. Here's a strictly catalog extension. Um, I made it so that we could, we can place a rocket and 
naturally this can be anything. These are data symbols, uh, and the library is just a table of contents from from the catalog. And the different uh, the different data symbols here have different options, so we can swap it to orange. Uh, the engine section, for instance, can have blue fins, etc., <coughs> etc. Et this middle section has a length domain too, uh, which we're going to look into a bit later. So that's the extension we're going to we're going to use for this demo. Let's see here if I can make things work. There we go. We have two main ways of overcoming the limitations of, of catalog spray out in the box. Um, those two are setting up proxies, which is, I would say, the easiest way, but uh, it's uh, somewhat limited. It works towards an interface, and if something isn't implemented in that interface, uh, then, you, uh, then you're not going to be able to do things through the proxy. We're going to look into it more in detail. And the other one is to implement uh, fully blown PGC snappers where we just steal things from the DSP data. We ask the DSP data, get me the, the 3D, give me uh, articles that the parts uh, that we want to show in the calculation view of the materials and, and, uh, and we're going to look at an example of that as well. Proxies. <coughs> Proxies work in that way. Uh, every every DSP data has a proxy. Uh, there's always a default proxy. And I think it's called the DSP data proxy. Uh, how it works is that the snapper, if it's a data symbol, uh, it asks the data, uh, give me the part, and and then the DSP data asks its proxy. Uh, should we use the default or do we want to make any modifications on the parts we have here? And then it sends it back to the DSP data and that's forwarded to the snapper. So it's basically, it asks the proxy uh, on what to do. And, uh, and we can define our own proxy, which means that all the things that DSP data or the, or the data symbol snapper asks the DSP data of, uh, can be can be accessed through the proxy, and we do not need to set up another snapper. We do not need to set up in, uh, a subclass of the DSP data either. It should work by just appending a new proxy to the data that we are using. Do we have any questions on so far on this? Okay, good. <coughs> Some of the things that can change through proxies, as of right now, are Boolean settings. Yes, true or false. Do we want this? Do we not want it? Uh, we got part modifications, um, and and that's you know we, we we want to change the part that we display in the um, in the build materials, or we can change quick properties. Uh, do we want other quick properties? Do we want more quick properties? Uh, do we want to change the domains of the quick properties that we're seeing? And this is where, where the color thing came, came in. Maybe if we have a certain model with a certain setting, we don't want to see all the options. And this is available as well. Uh, among other things, I think it's possible to append in validations also. <coughs> we're going to look at how to set up the proxy. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to, to subclass the proxy. Uh, the DSP data proxy, and and then we need to register the register or append the register, and what that does is basically for your certain catalog, it hands out which proxy each data should have. So it's a we need two things basically. Okay. So let's see here. I'm gonna take a look at my screen here, and um, we are gonna try and bring it up on your screen as well. Let's hope this works. So here I've set up a data proxy. Um, as you can see, we subclass it from the DSP data proxy, and we've done a few changes here, and we're gonna go through the changes and some of the, uh, the things we can do. 
Uh, here's a simple thing that many people would like to do. Uh, as, as per default, you allow option changes in the bill materials as of right now, which means that if you place a data symbol from your catalog into the drawing and go into bill of materials, you're going to see a drop down there where you can change things. This might not be the desired behavior and we can turn it off. In this case, the engine section, we want to be able to do this. For the other, for all the others, we do not. And in some cases here, like, like this if statement, uh, might not represent the best coding uh, practice. I've opted for readability during this presentation, so don't take you know every of these implementations as the best example on how to implement this. But it's pretty pretty easy to read this at least. So if we have the environment, we check the DSP data on that environment. If we have this product code, the P engine, then true uh, show the options. And I'm gonna pull up the calculation view. So that we can look on how this works. So here we have our parts. The engine section should allow changes. And as you can see here, we can change it from green to red. And now the part should be red. The other ones do not. So this is a typical Boolean example. So the snapper asks the DSP data, do we want to change? Do we want to allow this change or not? It goes back and, and voila. That's it. So it can be pretty pretty simple to, to work and you have the interface so you, you, you kind of have a guideline on what, what you can do and what you, what you can't do. Uh, where's the mouse pointer there it is? <coughs> okay, so this is a basic example. Another thing we, want, we might want to do is change the, uh, the sidebar properties or the quick properties as it's known in other areas. Uh, for the middle section, uh, as per default, we have three different lengths. This could be a this could be a table. It could be a rocket stage. It could be be anything. But but in this case, we have three different lengths as a default property on it. And for instance, uh, if we bring up the, the extension again, um, if we don't have something on top of it, like this we might want to be able to change the length of it. Uh, but if there is something connected on top of it, or there could be any other you know, relationship or, or a setting out there in the space that, uh, that makes us want to change it, we can disable it. So in this case, I've done like, if it's, if it's free, we can change it. And if it, if it has something stacked on top, then we may not, then we only show the option that has been selected. <coughs> So now we're going to take a look on how, how this can be done. Uh, the properties uh, in, the, in the sidebars that come straight out of the DSP data is formed like a tree. And, and we return the sidebar properties from this tree that we want to display and we can remove the parts of the tree that we don't. Uh, those familiar with, with how catalogs <laughs> work uh, know that it's, it, it's all a tree structure with features and options and selections and, and that gets reflected in the quick properties. We're going to the append here. Uh, I've uh, made a check, a boolean check, you know, do we want to limit it or not? This one, uh, check, you know, is there something connected on top of it? And if, if there isn't something connected <coughs> on top of it, we, if we don't want to limit the options, uh, uh, it's just going to pass on, return false, default behavior. Uh, if, if we do indeed want to change the options, we, we, uh, we have written a method here that you can check in the, in the code uh, that, that then removes the part of the tree that we don't want. Uh, we're not going to go that much into detail here. Uh, and, and, and it returns true and when we then come back to this thing, if, if the output for this method is true, then, then we're going to use these properties that we've appended and we get the result that we can see here. Uh, so you, and, and this is another thing. We do it in the proxy. We don't have to change the snapper. We don't need to change the DSP data. It's, it's a 
quick way to do minor changes. Do we have any questions on this so far? Is there anything else you'd like to, to ask or, or, uh, or we're going to move on to another area? All right. Part two, uh, we, can, we can select for each data object, we can return other parts. Now we just return super. Uh, I haven't set up an example of how to append parts, but you can just add more parts, other parts. Maybe you, you have some sort of table that adds parts uh, depending on, the, uh, on your specific implementation. Uh, you, you can play around with this as much as you want. Uh, this thing here though uh, is, is pretty interesting. Uh, it's part of the, the, the proxy interface. This is the, the, the part that actually appears in the uh, calculation view. And per default this is a DS part. So a data symbol part. If we subclass this, uh, we can uh, we can change the behaviors of the part uh, and display other things. Um, in this case, I, I've, I've replicated most of the behaviors. But to highlight one of the things that that is uh, that I think might be might be pretty common that you want to do, uh, I've chosen to change the article codes from that of the catalog. Catalog uh, as as default. Has, uh, has a way of building up part numbers depending on what features you set. But that might not always align properly with, with what the customer wants their parts to look like. Maybe, uh, maybe you need to, to, to set up the, the options in a different way in the catalog to make it user friendly. Uh, and maybe you still want to look the way that it used to. Um, so we, you can change the part. Uh, and in this case, I, I just subclass the part here from the one that, that we used originally. And once again, maybe not the best programming practice, but, but to highlight what you can do. Uh, during the construction here, uh, we, we go into uh, the data of the part, uh, not related to the DSP data. Uh, we check the article code. If it's an engine section, we want to call this a mod engine. If it's a middle section, we change the article code to mod middle, and if it's a nose cone, uh, then we change it to, to mod nose. And hopefully, if I've done everything wrong now, uh, right now, hopefully not wrong, um, and we press F5 here to reload the part. That didn't work. Let's try it again. There, we have a different part. Usually you don't do changes once it's submitted to a user. <laughs> okay, so, um, so you can change the article code. You, you, have, you have access to the entire part. You, you, can, you can do whatever you want with it. And you don't need to, like with all the other proxy things, you don't need to set up another snapper. You don't need to set up another DSP data. It's still using the, the catalog stuff. It's just that we have changed the behaviors just a little bit to fit our needs. All right. So far, so good. Let's um, <coughs> let's keep this here. I like that. Uh, other other things. The whole interface is, of course, in the base class. So you just overwrite it and use it. Loaded one was one that I got the uh, got a special request that I should probably highlight. This is uh, really common that if you change something in in uh, in a part in the catalogs or or your company has upgraded something. Then you can change uh, the way the data symbols uh, load, and that can be useful for a number of cases. Yes, that would be good for seeing how old old drawings they were corrupted and see yeah. if you had a new code. You want to override those? <coughs> That's right. Yeah. So maybe you had um, you have you had this certain article code, yeah. uh, P engine something something. Uh, now this article is not valid. But your customer still have, has uh, a lot of drawings out there with this old article code. And in loaded, uh, loaded material then, we can you know, go in, okay, so I don't want this article code, change it to this other, and just like you said. To, to enable which proxy you should, uh, you should use on the DSP data, you have one of these uh, proxy registers. You register these on a catalog basis. Uh, in our case, I've just said that 
Okay, which, which proxy are we supposed to use? Always use my, uh, this proxy, but you might very well want to do uh, some sort of uh, structure here where you say that certain part numbers should have this proxy and other part numbers should have this other proxy. You have the DSP data here to differentiate between which, which one you want to use and um, um, you, can, yeah, you can do what you want with it. But it's, uh, and it's appended like this. And this is done, I, I set it up during the initiation of, of the extension. Uh, it might very well be possible to do it during start or, or through some other hook. Um, and, and this one is called, it initializes the proxies, append DSP data proxy register. And, and this is the enterprise code of your catalog. So that catalog will always use this register that, we, that you saw on the, on the previous one. And that will use this data proxy. Any questions on proxies? Uh, otherwise, we're going to move on to the D, uh, to PGC snappers and how to augment them with, with uh, uh, data objects. Right. <coughs> Okay, since it's an interface on the proxy, it has to be pre-coded, you can't just change the interface, it's done in the base classes. Uh, so you're going to eventually run into things, okay, we want to do more than just what a data symbol can do, and in which case you implement the PGC snapper that you append the, the, the same data that the data symbol, which is the, the snapper used by catalogs. You do the same thing, <coughs> and, uh, and uh, when that's done, uh, you just get things from the data. Uh, like, give me the 3D, give me uh, uh, the parts, give me uh, detailed masks, give me this or that. Or uh, What you need to do is you need to append the data object to your new snapper. And in this case, we're going to use a model 3D snapper. As an example, because it's pretty basic, it just has a model and, and, uh, and it's, a, yeah, it's a good example class. And, uh, and when you've appended it, you use it. Uh, here you can see how a data symbol is structured. You have a multi-data. So there are two, two components to, to data from catalogs. You have the multi-data, which is a container where you put other DSP data. And the DSP data, is, that's for data symbol product data. So that's where the information is stored. The multi-data is just a, a wrapper, a container that allows you like give me all the parts of all the, the sub uh, DSP data. Uh, so, so the multi-data is, it needs to be there, but, but it's just a container, it doesn't hold a lot of uh, behaviors by default. <coughs> yeah, and this is an image of, of, of the container. You have the multi-data, which is a DS multi-p data, and you have the sub-data, which is DSP data. You need to init the multi-data, and then you need to init the sub-data, and then you need to append the sub-data to the multi-data. Uh, these are some of the things that you can get. Connectors, not supported a lot uh, right now. Uh, bounds, you can get uh, if you, you might want to cache that. But all the other things are very handy to, to get. You get the graphics. Uh, you get quick properties, domains and values, materials, and your parts. Basically, that, those are main things that you can get from the data. There's a ton of other, but, but I can't go through all of them. Yes? What is the difference between quick properties and snapper properties? Uh, quick properties are, are, uh, uh, are the ones on the snapper. Uh, those are the ones you see at the, at the side. Yeah, on the side. Uh, and I think that the base class for the ones used by by data symbols, mm -hmm. they are called sidebar properties. Sidebar. Yeah, so I think that's a. Uh, I don't exactly know the difference between them, uh, but but uh, they are they are different different classes that do the same thing basically. Yeah, because initially when we started, um, we had quick properties and then we had sidebar properties. 
Yeah. Or like, well, we may as well put them in one. Direction. Yeah, and I think this is a step in that direction. Sidebar properties are really practical because you can use them easily as animation properties. Yeah. Uh, which I don't think uh, the, uh, the original quick properties were. Then you need to use like animation properties. Mm -hmm. So I think sidebar properties, the, the, it's meant to encapsulate it. Maybe it's, it's a future, uh, further developer break. Yeah. Uh, I'm not that knowledgeable about that exact you know, differentiation. But the ones on data symbols are sidebar properties. <coughs> Okay, so let's take, an, uh, take a look at how you can, you can do, uh, you, how you can set up a, uh, a catalog snapper. Um, here is my Model 3D snapper, uh, extends Model 3D snapper. Model 3D snapper, as you might know, uh, has nothing to do with, uh, with uh, catalogs uh, per default. Um, so, so it's a clean shape. Uh, I, want, I usually start in the constructor uh, initializing the data because some of the constructor's methods uh, and, and calls that are being executed uh, might want to use the data, uh, like for instance your initial width, uh, the initial material that you apply uh, can be good to have. So, so I usually run this first, but, but uh, feel free to move it around if you feel that's more convenient. Um, here is the data. <clears throat> I've set up a few um, methods, getters and setter methods, and whether or not getters or setter methods are the correct way to do things. It's not going to be uh, debated <laughs> during this uh, uh, presentation, but we have a setter here. Uh, it's a DS multi-p data. Uh, we have a getter here, and that's just to, to shorten the, the code, basically. Uh, these are stored on the properties of, of the snapper, uh, like in the previous slide. And, and it's just to get and set to the, to the properties. We have a default one, uh, just straight out of the box. As you can see, there are no input parameters on this because it's really basic. It's a container object. If you have one of these multi-data, then we use our own uh, data. And I've set up a method for this, or a function for this, uh, that we can call it everywhere from. Uh, it's just to say that which catalog is this DSP data supposed to come from. Um, if you just use a table of contents for a data symbol, that is going to be sorted out by, by, by the button basically. But, but in our case, we, we, we need to, to define a few things. Um, <coughs> enterprise code defines which catalog you use. Vendor code, uh, that's, that's uh, also defined uh, to define the specific um, uh, catalog. Uh, we have the ARC code, which could be like P engine uh, section, it could be P nose cone, uh, uh, whatever they are called in the catalog. Uh, I've always defaulted here to nose cone. Uh, I think you should, you should always have a valid part as the default, uh, <coughs> probably a good, good practice. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and then you have the uh, um, the, the, the product catalog code, which is like sub catalog, this is connected to the to the price list being used in the catalog, and then we set the default options defined in the catalog, and that's basically it. We got the DSP data as it should come out of the catalog, and then we append this to the multi data. We put it. The multi data is also prop of, so you can just use the put method here. Um, default, this is the key. Since we are stacking up a lot of DSP data under the multidata in the container, they're defined with their keys. So if you want to get a certain DSP data, which is linked to a certain product, like the engine, for instance, uh, you're going to access it through the key. In this example, we only have one DSP data per multidata. So it's always going to be the default. Uh, so we, so um, so instead of, of writing, you know, get data with the key default, we, we say that, okay, so if we write data, uh, then we get the default one. Uh, it's, uh, it saves a lot, uh, a lot of lines of code. So this is how you set up 
the data. And once you've done this, uh, when you initialize the, the snapper now, it should have the data available. And uh, at this point, we can start getting things from it. Do we have any questions on how to initialize the data? Nope. Okay, then we're going to look at how to get things from the data. Uh, to do this, uh, we are going to take a look at how it looks straight out of the box. Um, <coughs> and we're not going to use this demo one, we're going to use this one. And this is the same thing, I've set up the same thing, a library with buttons that creates the snapper, uh, the different snapper types. I've subclassed the one that you saw earlier into three different ones. So we have one for, for the nose cone, one for the middle section, and one for the engine. And they all have their different article codes linked to it, and they get their data created. So if we just want to place this thing right now, you can see it's, it, it's a red box, and this is because I decided to, write, uh, to, to print out the local bound. <coughs> So, uh, we can start with getting the local bound, because this is not what that part, uh, that part local bound should look like. It should be smaller. So we can get the local bound from the data. And, and if we just comment this thing out, I've prepared an example of this. Here we go to the default subdata, uh, and we get the local bound. This is not cached super well, so if you're doing this a lot, you, you're probably going to want to cache the local bound here. Or you have to set, set up a heuristic like the one above to, to, to encapsulate your snapper. Um, but as I said before, uh, I'm not focusing on, on the best programming practice, but on readability. And, and I want you to get the, the grasp of the basic functions here. So using this local bound instead of from the data, we should see on the on the in the extension that this thing grows a bit smaller because it's based off the model and there we go it's a little bit smaller should be able to fit this thing because uh, this is the same uh, connect local bound new things for 8.5 that you need to to uh, make sure to include all the snappers i thought i'd change this thing uh, we don't want to loop this we just want to you know expand it a little bit to make it a lot faster uh, but in our case here, I, I looked over the connected. <laughs> build 2D, uh, we can just run data, build me the 2D, and we append that to the graph of this model 3D snapper. Same thing, you ask the data, give me the 2D, and it's going to give you the 2D. So hopefully it should have the correct 2D if we, if we swap to the 2D view. Uh, this does not look right. <laughs> Okay, that's, uh, <laughs> that's unfortunate. <laughs> no idea what that happened. Um, but as you saw, there was 2D, which is better than nothing. Um, we, have, uh, we have the detail mask also. Uh, we can ask that from the data here. I return super instead. Uh, this will then use the, the different uh, LODs of the... Of the uh, of the model being used and, and if, it, if there for instance isn't a super high res model then it's not gonna, gonna put that into the detail mask so it's pretty practical in that regard. But we want some 3D and we're gonna get it, uh, hopefully this time it works. Uh, back to that data, get me the 3D and, and hopefully it should give us the 3D. I'll disable the, the local bound made of red wine here. Uh, to highlight the, highlight the change and hopefully we should see the 3D appear now. There it is. Now we have this here. But if I if I remove this thing here, you see the, the quick properties that came up for the for the data symbol. I don't think we're gonna we're not gonna see this on our model 3D snapper because we haven't defined it and I think you're getting the getting the hang of it right now. Uh, to get the, the, the properties, <coughs> we get those from the data as well. And hopefully they should show up now. But here we have, a, so if we refresh them, we have them here. But nothing's going to happen if I flip it to blue. 
because we also need to, when we set it, we also need to update the data with that value. That's what we do here. Hopefully now it should swap to blue. So we're basically making it closer and closer to a data symbol. The good thing about this is that now we can implement whatever behaviors we want on this snapper because it's not part of, of, of core and it's it, local to our extension. So, so we're basically setting up our own playground here by just you know getting the things uh, from the DSP data to help us with that. Now if I change this to orange, hopefully it should turn orange and there you have an orange. One. Yes. So when you change a sidebar property, basically what's happening is that it's calling data dot put in the background. Uh, in this case, we append the properties of the snapper. So, so what you see here when we click this one, yeah, these are the properties of the snapper, uh, and that is going to call try set property on the snapper, okay. and that's what we then connect on on the try set on of the data. So, so, so it's going to act exactly like the data symbol, but yeah. it, it's, um, um, but it's not the data symbol. Okay. Now, uh, you want to do it through code. Say you wanted to change orange through code instead of using the sidebar properties. Yeah. When you call it data .put, it kind of is the same thing as set property, is it not? Uh, yeah, I think it's. Okay, I'm not a hundred percent certain, but I think uh, it's going to go through. No, it's not going to go through try set because it's not a, an actual sidebar property. I think it's just going to, if you if you write the code, you're going to go into the data, say put, and then whatever. The feature key. Yeah, yeah exactly. The feature yeah. key or the group code mm -hmm. of that feature and, and then the, the code of the option you want to set. That should not call a try set property, no. <coughs> Uh, we, we could we could possibly try it if we have the time at the end of the uh, at the end of the session. How much time do we have left? Uh, ten minutes. Ten minutes. So, yeah. so um, those are some of the basics. Uh, I uh, I said one of the things that the catalog currently doesn't support are the um, are the, the connectors that we cannot have intricate connection behaviors as of right now. Uh, we have uh, male and female connectors basically saying that uh, you cannot connect them in you know however you like, but it's pretty limited. And <clears throat> for my case here, I, I wanted to, to highlight one of the things. Uh, to set up a rocket stage like this in, in, in catalogs, uh, we're going to need two different connectors here uh, to allow that, that you cannot put the nose cone on, on the base, for instance. These have different connectors, or it's a different female-male connector, <coughs> which means that, uh, that we have one connector that allows this thing, but on top of, of the cylindrical here, we actually have two different connectors with two different uh, codes, which allows us to place both a nose cone to snap um, and this one to snap. But there is no actual check here. <coughs> There's no actual check to say that you're not allowed to snap in the middle here. The connector is still there, but it doesn't there isn't any logic to, to prevent that. I wanted to change that on the Mon 3D snapper here. So so what I did was I set up the PPC behavior basically to, to first I, I set up connectors similar to the ones in, in catalogs. This is right now it's not supported 100%. So I stole the code from data symbol here and, uh, and did the same thing. But I spoke with, uh, with some of the creators of, of catalogs and they say they're going to take a look at this. Make sure it's just the same, the same process data.get connectors and you get the connectors. That would be really handy. But right now, this is what we have. <coughs> So we set up the connectors as, as they're defined in the catalog, we append them to the snapper and now we can do whatever we want with them. So, so for, the, beta to the, so for the, the subclasses of this, so if we look at the middle section here, I can define my own allow attach behavior for those connectors. 
So, so basically, I can check here if uh, if the middle to nose is is connected. Then do not allow attached to anything else, which then would prevent multiple uh, things to snap to the same place in this extension. Let's hope it works and check this out for a few days now. Okay, so now we can snap one in the middle. Um, that's a pretty neat feature. Uh, it's, it's pretty common that you that you want to define the connection behaviors depending on uh, other connections that you've made already. <coughs> uh, well, let's see here. Do we have any questions on this uh, that we've gone through? Any any other things we would like to show? Otherwise, we can take a look and see if we can. I, I do have a question. But yeah. <laughs> Maybe after? That's yeah, good. yeah, we have to. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, if we were to want to, if we want to change the uh, the data, I haven't tried this out. Oh, here, tooltip. Another thing you can get from from the data. Um, and ah, right here. I forgot an important part. Yeah, parts. Exactly. Um, this one ties into the multi-data. Uh, it's a container, it doesn't have you know, a lot of behaviors per default, but one thing that's really practical to use the multi-data for is part scaling. So if you append a lot of DSP data to this particular snapper, uh, multi-data, if we ask multi-data, give me the parts, it's going to give you the parts for all of them, uh, and not just uh, a certain sub-data. And that's just what, what I do like this. So multi-data, get part. The full interfaces, of course, in the uh, in the DSP uh, DSM multi-data P. Gee, that's a tongue twister. DS multi P data. If you if we if you check this one out, you, you're gonna see the full interface. And and, uh, and if we do this, just get all the parts for one. Uh, we should. See the parts appear for this rocket, and we should have two little sections. Do we get two? Yeah, we have two little sections. So, and as you can see here, it doesn't say P engine uh, engine section, but it actually says mod engine. Yeah. And that is because we're still using the same proxy that we set up earlier. All, all the all the DSP data uh, related to this catalog are going to use the same proxy, so we can actually do this gradually without risking a lot of uh, of rewrite. So you set up a catalog extension as a, as a new company coming coming in, uh, or or as somebody that wants to upgrade uh, to a catalog solution, <coughs> you can set up a catalog. You can get a minimal viable product basically. You, you can place your things. You might not be able to do all, all the connection behaviors uh, um, uh, that, that, that you really want, but at least you can try it out. You can play around with it. You can get a better feel for what you actually need. Once that is done, you can set up a proxy. So you can, you can play around with that. You know, what, what can we do uh, with the proxy? We can change the parts. Okay, this might be enough. You know, for, for for the extension we want to do, this this might very well be be all we need, and we can save a lot of time in programming. But if we want to take it one step further and actually implement these snappers like this, we can still use all of the things that we already have. We can use the catalog to get get our domains and data, and materials, and yeah, um, and we can use the proxy that changes article codes or, or what you want. Um, and, and then we can, you know, just add, for instance, if it's connection limitations that you want to 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 the to the snapper. So, uh, so that's uh, uh, that's what I intended to present today. Uh, do we have any questions? Let's run a bit of Q and A Q &A if, if there are questions. I know you have the question, so so, but it was a long one. Yeah, it's a long one. Yeah, well, we'll take it after the session then. Uh, 
at home. But you can ask a question and then if someone else is interested in the same thing, you can ask if everyone at the same time. That works, right? Uh, sorry? If you ask a question now, you, you can ask them afterwards. But if, they, if someone else is interested, they can joke. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. So the problem I'm having is um, so your snapper property is there, like the, the hull, the, the finish where the, the rocket was only, it's not nested, it's just kind of as soon as you, like if you were to pull the rocket in right now, you can see that there's no nesting at all. So we don't have any nesting in this no, material. So yeah. say you have a, so for our products, they're quite nested. You yeah, know, yeah that's usually the case. Three, maybe even six levels. <coughs> So if you wanted to, um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to um, use the scheme manager as well to put the data and basically by getting the lowest level uh, finished material, yeah. get that path or that tree, material tree view item, yeah. or whatever. So how can I generate the path for that data by going get a dot put with the lowest level you use a group code for that. But what if, like, I think. maybe I should probably have computer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> having issues with it because even though I have the, I do have the group code set up in the catalog. Yep. And, you know, I'll call data dump put and then the material code, but because it's so nested and so many different features, yeah. it's saying, you know, not in domain or not in domain. Oh. Uh, we're calling data dump put. We have a similar kind of issue. I, I'm not sure, but when you say about tree, mm -hmm. normally this will happen if under your material feature, yeah, there is further some tree. Yes. Yeah. That's right. right. So what happens is when the option is getting changed, mm -hmm. the the new tree which is coming under the new option now for that feature, that gets initialized to the default options right. rather than remembering the old tree. Mm -hmm. So I think the over to override the behavior answer is already in the tree. You remember what tree is there underneath, mm -hmm. and once that feature has got new option set in the super, try to yeah. re read it. Try to reapply the same. Reapply the same tree underneath mm -hmm. the new set. The new set. Yeah. So would that, one, would that one work? Scenario I, I found maybe. When you are changing the property of one of these uh, stacks, yeah. you might need to do that for the whole stack. That yeah, part. and that's what I also want to look into is when you change a sidebar property. Yeah. If I could, maybe I need to go behind the scenes more into the core code, but if I could get or look into tricep property more because obviously that's what it's to say. You yeah. know, you have finishes up. I have finishes so you know, for a chair, and they're all nested. And if I select lowest level one even though it's nested say 10 options yeah. it works but then when I try and do it through data.put the scheme manager yeah. if I could mimic that then it would work for me perfectly maybe I need to go with code more it just it's very yeah exactly you, you could you could take a look at that I I would think that if you run just data and then put you write the group code then to differentiate yeah. between all the others and then then, uh, then the code and if the data is initialized, uh, yeah, and <clears throat> then I don't really see why that shouldn't work. Uh, it should. I mean, I can understand why the rest of the tree gets, you know, disappears when you yeah. change the base. Uh, but why it doesn't? It should work. I think what's happening is because, like, they're obviously not all the all the same group codes. You know, say you have, for example, a rocket. You know, you have the whole material. And then maybe it goes down to you know another level and then another level. Yeah. And each feature has a different group code. Because I don't think it's a good practice to make them all the same group code. No, they shouldn't have the same group code. If you have the same group code, the, the, the algorithm is basically not going to know which thing you actually exactly. want to change with the code. Exactly. So say you have orange, yeah. and now you want red, but red's in a different feature with a different group code. Uh, how do you get that path or how do you get that group code that's selected? Yeah, I had the same problem actually. Yeah. Um, and with the scheme manager, like I only have access yeah. to the material, the material code selected. Yeah. With that, so yeah. You can you can ask the um, you you can brute force this, of course, but it's not beautiful. Yeah. You can just check all well, the brute I, I codes until something is happening. My head's been spinning, so I kind of took a shortcut. 
Uh, would it be possible for you to, to send in a feature request for this or, or ask dev support? Uh, yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. I think it's just, I need to play around with it more. So. All right. Um, okay, so uh, I think we're, we're out of time. Uh, thank everybody for showing up. Um, it's been a pleasure.